Hello to all, as always, welcome to Relifted Cinema. Today we are at your service with a recap of an exciting and tragic drama film based on a true story, Murder in the First, from 1995, featuring the impactful performance of Kevin Bacon and Christian Slater. Director Mark Rocco, writer Dan Gordon, cast Christian Slater, Kevin Bacon, Gary Oldman, M. Beth Davids, William H. Macy, Stephen Tobolowski, Brad Dourif, and R. Lee Ermey, winning two awards and two nominations. Short plot, an eager and idealistic young attorney defends an Alcatraz prisoner accused of murdering a fellow inmate. The extenuating circumstances. His client had just spent over three years in solitaire. Just a quick reminder, if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Now let's back to the commentary. At the age of 17, Henry Young, who was without parents, sought employment at a local grocery store but was turned away. Facing desperation, he resorted to stealing $5 from the establishment in an effort to provide nourishment for himself and his younger sister Rosetta, with both siblings in a state of poverty. He was caught by the owner of the store and subsequently detained by the authorities, while Rosetta was placed in an orphanage. Given that the grocery store also functioned as a United States post office, Young's crime was deemed a federal offense. As a result, he was permanently separated from Rosetta and received a sentence to serve time at the Leavenworth Penitentiary in Kansas. In the subsequent years, Henry Young was moved to the federal prison on Alcatraz Island, where he suffered under the harsh regime of the associate warden, Milton Glenn. It was during his time there that Young got involved in an escape effort alongside fellow inmates Rufus McCain and Arthur Barker. The escape plan at Alcatraz went terribly wrong because someone named McCain turned on the group. Barker didn't make it. He was caught and killed by the guards. After that, Glenn, who's in charge, punished one of the inmates, Young, by sending him to the worst part of the prison, a place they call The Hole. It's basically a dungeon. While all this was going down, the folks running the prison told the world how no one can escape from Alcatraz. Henry, another inmate, got really rough treatment from Glenn. They hit him, threw him downstairs, and even left him without clothes in The Hole. At one point, Glenn hurt Henry's ankle with a razor so he couldn't walk properly. Except for a half hour on Christmas in 1940, Henry was left alone in that terrible place for three years. This messed with his mind big time. When they finally let Henry back with the rest, he wasn't okay. One day, in the place where the inmates eat, he snapped. He used a spoon to kill the man who betrayed the escape plan, McCain. And everyone saw it. The guards the other prisoners, everybody. Now, Henri is in a lot of trouble. He's got to face a murder trial in San Francisco. The people in charge of the law see it as a simple case. They think it's clear he did it and there's no excuse. But his lawyer, a younger guy fresh out of Harvard named Stamphill, doesn't agree. He digs into Henry's past and learns how bad things were for him at Alcatraz. Stamphill thinks the horrible way Henry was treated made him lose his mind, and he decides to use this in court. His plan is not just to defend Henry, but to show that Alcatraz itself is to blame for what happened to him. Needless to say, this idea doesn't make Stamp Hill popular with his co-workers or even his own brother. On one of his visits to Henry, Stamp Hill does something kind. He finds a way to bring a bit of happiness to Henri by arranging a visit from a lady named Blanche. In the highly charged trial that Judge Clausen is overseeing, things get pretty tense. Glenn is at the center of it all. He's accused of treating Young horribly, but Glenn says that's not true. He insists he's not the bad guy, just like Stamphill, his attorney, points out. Stamphill says that Alcatraz, the famous prison, never kept people around if they started losing their minds. They were sent to a mental hospital instead. The drama heats up when a former guard, Derek Simpson, takes the stand. He spills the beans, saying Glenn made him help with some really bad stuff. But there's a catch. McNeil, another attorney, points out Simpson was canned for being a drunk. Because of his shaky credibility, Judge Clausen tells the jury, 
to ignore everything Simpson said. Stamphill isn't happy. He blames Byron, another guy involved in the case, for Simpson's testimony not sticking. He's also on Humpson's case, another prison official. Stamphill says Humpson should have been keeping an eye on Glenn, but Humpson says that's tough since he's got two other prisons to run and never even met Young. Away from the courtroom drama, Stamphill makes a heartwarming move. He finds Rosetta, someone really important to Henri, and she comes for a visit. Turns out Rosetta is doing okay, and she has a baby who she's named after Henri, which is a sweet touch to the whole intense situation. Henry Young, tired and hopeless about returning to Alcatraz, decides he'd rather accept a guilty plea, believing death is preferable to life there. Surprisingly, he's not convicted of murder, but of a lesser crime, thanks to the jury. They also think Alcatraz and its leaders did some truly bad things to people and should be investigated. His lawyer, Stamphill, promises to try and get Henry to a different jail and to look into his original case again. But, in a sad turn, the next time Stamphill hears about Henry, he's passed away in his cell, having scrawled victory on the wall, implying his death had meaning. Despite being locked away in solitary confinement on the orders of his foe, Warden Glenn, Henry feels like he's won something as his fellow inmates show their support loudly. Stamphill reflects on all this later, noting that the Supreme Court actually agreed with the trial's findings six months afterward, leading to the end of Alcatraz's era of harsh punishment. Glenn was found guilty of mistreating prisoners and lost his career in prisons. Stamphill, now back in his regular law practice, remembers Henri fondly, especially for turning him into a baseball enthusiast, giving Henri credit for a significant change with a heartfelt, you did it, Henri. The final note tells us that Alcatraz was eventually shut down in 1963, and nowadays it's a place where tourists come to visit by the millions.